A corporation is a type of formal business structure that is more complicated than an LLC, but offers benefits that LLCs do not. Corporations are great if you are looking to raise money from venture capital or looking to list on a stock exchange. Corporations are also able to more efficiently carry money over between tax years. The nine largest corporations in Pennsylvania employ almost 800,000 people and bring in an average annual revenue of over $23 billion. If you are starting a business and not sure which business structure is best for you, check out our other video, Choosing the Right Business Structure for Your Business, linked below. There are two ways to form a corporation. You can form one yourself, or you can hire a service to do it for you. In this video, we will look at both options and help you decide how to go about forming your own corporation. Remember, this video is not legal advice. If you are unsure of whether your company should be a corporation, consult with an accountant or an attorney. By forming a corporation on your own, you can save yourself some money. Let's start by looking at the steps to form a corporation on your own. 1. Choose and secure your corporation's name. The name you select for your corporation will establish its brand. It's the first thing most people will learn about your organization. It's important to pick a name that both aligns with your brand and follows the rules of naming guidelines in Pennsylvania. You'll need to check Pennsylvania's specific naming requirements, but you should follow these general rules in choosing a name. Your name must contain the word corporation, company, incorporated, limited, or an abbreviation of one of these terms. Your name cannot use the words bank, trust, trustee, credit union, or other related words without approval. Your name cannot include words that could confuse your corporation with a government agency such as FBI, Treasury, State Department, etc. The name must be distinct from that of any other corporation in Pennsylvania. For more information on what makes a name distinct, as well as Pennsylvania's specific naming requirements, check out our other video, How to Name Your Business in Pennsylvania, linked below. Once you have a name selected, do a name search to make sure it's available in Pennsylvania. After doing a Pennsylvania name search, you'll want to do a domain search to see if your name is available as a URL. Even if you don't plan on making a website today, you may want to secure the URL so someone else doesn't take it. 2. Choose a registered agent. You must appoint a registered agent when you register your corporation in Pennsylvania. Note that Pennsylvania recognizes registered offices instead of singular registered agents. The registered agent can be an individual in the company, including yourself, or you can hire a professional service authorized to do business in Pennsylvania. They will send and receive legal papers on your behalf. These documents include official correspondence, like legal summons and document filings, which your registered agent will receive and forward to you. Your registered agent will also help remind you to file the necessary reports. Failure to properly maintain your corporation can result in fines and dissolution, so this assistance is valuable. Designating someone else to serve as a registered agent for your corporation has its benefits. To learn more about hiring a registered agent service for your corporation, read our Should I Use a Registered Agent Service guide linked below. 3. Hold an organizational meeting. Before you officially file the formation documents in Step 4, you will need to hold an organizational meeting to complete the following tasks. Create and approve bylaws, select your initial directors, determine your share structure, and execute an incorporator's statement. Let's break down each of these. Create and approve bylaws. Bylaws are the rules that determine how your organization will be governed and run. You can think about the bylaws as a constitution for your corporation. It makes the rules and priorities clear for everyone involved. A corporation's bylaws will supplement any rules set forth by the federal government or the state. In your bylaws, be sure to include how the corporation will be governed, including the role of directors and officers, how meetings are held, voting procedures, and how officers and directors are elected, how records will be kept and managed, how disputes will be handled, how bylaws will be added and amended in the future, the date of the annual shareholder meeting, how to negotiate contracts, fiduciary duties to the corporation, such as acting in the best interest of the corporation, and what constitutes a quorum for voting purposes. Appoint Initial Directors You must appoint at least one director who will oversee your Pennsylvania corporation until the first shareholder meeting. A corporate director is in charge of the adoption, amendment, and repeal of the operational bylaws as well as the election, supervision, and removal of officers. After forming the corporation, the incorporators, or initial directors, if named on the formation documents, should call an organizational meeting. 
During this initial meeting, either the incorporators will elect the board of directors, or the initial directors will appoint the officers. Choose a share structure and strategy. A share of stock is the unit of ownership of a corporation. Each share of stock represents a percentage of ownership of the company. For example, if a corporation issues only one share of stock, the shareholder, or stock owner, would then own 100% of the corporation. Shares can be structured into classes. Each class, termed as a share class, holds different rights and privileges. You can have multiple classes and each class can hold any number of shares. The standard Articles of Incorporation form issued by the Pennsylvania Department of State can only be used to start a corporation with one share class. If a corporation needs a multiple share class structure, they must either attach an additional provision or compose their own Articles of Incorporation. We recommend starting with a high number of authorized shares. Many attorneys suggest 10 million. By starting with a high number, you have the flexibility to issue shares as needed without paying legal fees to increase your initial authorized shares amount. Create and execute an incorporator's statement. The incorporators should sign an incorporator's statement with complete names and addresses of each initial director and store it in the corporate records book. This document names the initial directors that will serve until the board of directors is elected during the first shareholders meeting. It should be stored with the rest of your corporate records. Four, file the Articles of Incorporation. You will need to file the Articles of Incorporation with the state of Pennsylvania. Once the articles are approved, you'll have officially formed a corporation. You can file online or by mail with the Pennsylvania Department of State. Filing fees vary, so check out our page linked below for more information. The formation documents will cover the basics of your corporation, including your corporate name and principal address, your registered agent's name and street address, and the number of authorized shares your corporation is allowed to issue. You must also include a docketing statement with your Articles of Incorporation. This form includes your entity's name, a description of the business's activity, the name and address of the individuals responsible for your initial tax reports, your employer identification number, and the fiscal year end date. As mentioned in the previous section, the standard Articles of Incorporation form can only be used to start a corporation with one share class. If your corporation needs a multiple share class structure, you must either attach an additional provision or compose your own Articles of Incorporation. Five, get an EIN. Lastly, you'll need to get an Employer Identification Number, or EIN, from the IRS. Also known as a Federal Tax Identification Number, your EIN is like a Social Security Number for your corporation. An EIN is how the IRS tracks your business for tax purposes, but it's also necessary to open a business bank account and legally hire employees. The good news is that EINs are free and can be quickly obtained by visiting the irs.gov website. For more information on EINs, check out our other video linked below. Now that you know all the steps to forming a corporation on your own, maybe you don't want to go through the process by yourself. Let's take a look at the other way to form a corporation. Hiring a professional service to file your forms and act as your registered agent for the corporation will cost you an additional $50 to $150. However, there are several benefits to working with a pro. A hired registered agent helps with getting your reports filed on time, helps you stay organized by keeping your business mail separate, and is available at all regular business hours to accept official mail and legal papers on your corporation's behalf. A final and important additional benefit to using a service is privacy. A professional service will provide a level of privacy by withholding your personal name from the corporation's contact information. There are many reasons why you might not want your personal information easily accessible and associated with your business. Hiring a professional corporation formation service is an easy way to accomplish this. If you want to form a company that can issue stock, raise money through investors, or efficiently carry money over between tax years, then a corporation is the right business structure for you. Now you know all the steps to form a corporation. For a more detailed guide, visit our site at howtostartanllc.com. Give the video a like if you found it useful, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. If you have questions or encounter any roadblocks, leave a comment below. Good luck with starting your corporation.